Right, we have a, a request by this exam paper to create a half development of this extraction hood. So they've very kindly given you a 3D version as well as the orthogonal drawing. Notice that the orthogonal drawing is in third angle projection. So it'll be different if it was in first angle projection. It would show you like this in first angle. So um, that's third angle and that's first angle. Well, just be aware of that because you might be asked about that in an exam, um, especially in a multiple choice question where they'll throw a few things around. So that's third angle. All right, so first thing to do, as I said before, when you want to create this projection, just make sure that you label everything that you can find that is a true length. So I've done that here already. Um, remember, true lengths are always going to be parallel to a a viewing plane. So if I draw the viewing plane down here, just to make it easier for you, this will be the top view and that will be the front view. Okay. So looking from on top, you can see these edges here, those edges around there, they're all parallel to the top plane. And you can see the parallelism here. So they're going to be a true, these are going to be true lengths all the way across down from there. In fact, um, this is a vertical surface at the back. So looking at this from the top, um, you're going to be able to see a true length here as well. So that'll be a true length um, over here. And this, it looks as though that's, this won't be a true length. Actually, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm wrong. That won't be a true length because you see how it's sloping inwards here. So that's not a true length. Um, true lengths will be on the base. Yep. From all the way around the base will be true lengths. And this seam will actually be, this seam length will be a true length right there. Because looking at it from the side here, this seam is parallel to the viewing plane. That edge isn't, and they appear the same when you look at them from the front face. But this seam, mid seam, is parallel. Now it tells you in the space provided, construct a half development. Notice it's a half, you don't have to do the whole thing. Just a half development of the hood, commencing with the seam A1 as shown above. At starting point A is given below. Now they've labeled everything for you, all the points for you, and they want you to start at A. So A is at the top and A1. Now you know straight away that a1 is a true length. Now I'm going to use these. These are dividers. They're a bit different to a compass. Compass has a lead point and it has, there you go, has a lead point and a pin. These have just two pins. These come from a very old set or this divider comes from a very old set that my father owned and um, there they are. You can buy these now for a few dollars but these are amazing. They used to use ink inside these pens and they're all made for standard. They're a beautiful set, very well made. This one's for tiny little circles, um, made in Germany these ones, and beautiful things to own. So they remind me of him. I keep them. Okay, so as I mentioned before, this is a true length A to I, it's a seam. So we can take that true length, squeeze the dividers in, we can measure it with a ruler if you want, make a mark, and there it is there. So that's part A1. And I'll label it A1. Okay, now moving across over here, we have another true length. Well, which is this length 3, 2. So from, oh, I should say right at the back here really, from 1 to 2 is going to be a true length seen from the bottom. And it's also going to be a right angle. So that's a right angle there. So we'd expect to be a right angle here. Now I'm going to use a, well I guess I'll do this in the pen. So we're going to make it a right angle. You can always do that by lining up lines like this on a ruler. 
lining up the top edge and the bottom edge and you can see to create a right angle. It's a little quick shortcut. And the distance will be from there to there which we can determine from very nicely we've been given the, the rear view here. So that, that, that one there, that's a true length. So there it is there. And that will be 0.2. There it is. Okay, now looking at the top here, we've got another true length. So that length from there to there, from A to B is a true length. And we'll find it over here. A to B will be the same as D to C because it's a rectangle halfway. And if we wanted to check it, we can always check it from up here. There it is true length. So it's also going to be at right angles so I'll draw that right angle across and use my dividers to mark out the point. It's there. So now we have our first face which is AB21. AB21. Alright that's pretty simple. So far so good. Now the next stage may be a little bit more complex because we now have to have a point 3. Now we know that point 3 is going to be a distance from 1 to 3, a true length away. But we don't really know at what point that this 3 is. We can describe an arc that tells us it's that length. There we go. So from point 2 from here to point 3, from point 2 to point 3 is that distance that I've just marked here. And now I'm going to scribe an arc to indicate it, like that. So point 3 lies somewhere on that arc. To find out, to find out where on this arc point 3 is going to lie, we need an intersection with another arc. So from 2 to 3 we have an arc, but I don't have point C to be able to create an arc. So what I have to do now is create another line, an imaginary line from B down to 3, like that. Now it's no good to us in a 3D drawing, so I have to create the line from B here. Let me show you on your actual drawing from B down to 3. But I will need to know its true length. Well, let's do it from the top here. That way it might be easier for you to see. So from B to 3. That diagonal line that I've just created down from B to 3 is the same as this line from B to 3 when viewed from a 3D point of view. Now to get its true length of this line B to 3, I need to swivel this whole thing up so that this B3 line becomes parallel to the viewing plane. At the moment it's at an angle. So let's do that. So I'll set this up to B to 3. Wind it out a little bit. Now it's not going to be much of a difference, but there we go. I mean it's really bugger all of a difference. But nonetheless, we'll go through the action to show you what it looks like. So it moves from there. I drop it all the way straight down. It'll be slightly longer. And where it intersects that bottom plane, which is just that point there, which is a little bit longer than what it was, that is going to be the true length of B3. From B to 3. So let me get my compass, like, you know, it's not going to be a whole lot of, lot of difference, but it will be. So I'll wind this out, get my length to be 3. Right. Now, when I place the compass point here on B, and I scribe an arc, wherever it meets point 3, the arc that I've scribed on the 3, there, that intersection point, Remember, we said that point 3 had to lie 
somewhere along an arc that's the distance between 2 and 3, a radius 2 and 3, and that was the first arc that we did. And then we made another imaginary line that went from A diagonally down to 3, like this, and we replicated it here on the top view. We swung the whole line up till it's parallel to the viewing plane, dropped it down to the base plane, which the object's sitting on, and then drew a line from B, the top here, down to 3. We got the true length, and we scribed that from B, that true length, and wherever it intersected, that point on the original arc from 3 is the location of point 3, that point there. Hope you get my point. So once we've got this, the problem's almost over. That was the hardest part of everything we had to do. So that's point 3. Okay, now the next section will require us to create a point C. Now, to find C, we know that C is going to be, that C is going to be at the intersection of an arc between B and C and an arc between 3 and C. We do those two arcs and the intersection point will be point C. But we need true lengths of B and C. And do we have them? Yes, we do. Because B and C is already given to us as a true length in the front view over here. Or even the top view if you wanted to look at it. Either way, we'll get it. There it is. So let's do that arc somewhere there. And point C will lie on that arc somewhere. Where will it lie? Well, we need to have another arc to find its intersection point, And the other arc will need to be the distance between 3 and C. But 3 and C is a sloping line away from the surface and the top view and the front view. So we need to bring 3 and C to a point where we can find its true length. So to do that, we're going to have to step our compass in, rotate our compass, and move C till it is parallel to the viewing plane. See, I've rotated it around. And now that's where it is. I'll drop that straight down because point C is on the top. I'll take it straight down using that line as a guide to make sure I'm parallel. And it intersects there. So the true length of 3 to C is this line from here. From there to there not much of a difference but it is a difference so get at my compass arc and now I'm going to look for point C by intersecting this putting that on point 3 and seeing where it intersects and there it intersects right there so that's point C and now I've got my shape starting to happen. I remember I only have to do a half development, so I really only have to do. So I've got the back shape, I've got this face here. Oh, I should show you a bit there. I've got the back shape, that one. I've got this face here now represented. There it is there. And now I only need this small face down here. And since these two sides are parallel, it's not going to be super difficult for me. All right, I think we should be able to manage it. So the distance 3 and 4 to find point 4 is a true length. Um, so the true length is shown to us over here between 3 and 4 in the top view. So there it is there. So we're really kind of using a triangulation process to do this. So 3 and 4 is here. It's going to lie on that arc somewhere. I slipped off it. Alright, so that's that distance. Now to find that point 4, I need another intersection point. Well, at the moment I don't have one over here. So I may need to create one. <coughs> so again, I'm going to use my trusty diagonal line. I'm going to draw a diagonal line from C to 4, like that. 
So you notice how this question is worth eight marks. Because you have to do a fair bit of fiddling to get it. Alright, so here's my next diagonal line. I know what that is, it's a true length, but now I need to go from C to 4. Now, C to 4 is going to be a diagonal line like this in the top view. I can't really see that as a true length, so I need to swivel the whole line all the way down till it's parallel to the viewing plane. There. Right there. See it? At that point, I'm going to drop that plane straight down to the base because 4 is sitting on the base. So I swing it down here. I know position is C is, is, is there, or is there, I should say. No, here. That's C. And there is going to be my true length of that diagonal that I just created, that one from C to 4. Alright, so let's get the compass out, measure this length, or wind the compass till it's got the correct length here. Yeah. So that's, we've now step created the arc, that arc length that goes from C to 4. We did it by swiveling this line down till it became parallel with the viewing plane, dropped it down to the base because it's 4's on the base, and then drew a line from C down to 4, gives it our true length. So we swivel the whole thing sideways. All right, and we're going to go from point C to 4. There we go. And we stepped that earlier arc out there. That was 3 to 4. So we've now located point 4. It's right there. You're doing it just with triangulation using two different arcs at their intersection point is where we want to be. Okay. And now we've got to find point D. Well, that shouldn't be too hard for us. Um, we know that there's a true length between C and D. C and D is a true length. So we'll not, don't ever get the measurements off your, your, um, your, your isometric view. Always get them from your orthogonal view. So there's the true length. We make an arc from C to D. There it is. And to find the intersection point, we need another arc. And we can use point 4 to D to find that. And we know that's a true length, because 4 to D, looking in the top view here, is parallel to the viewing plane. And all we need to do is grab it straight off the front view. 4 to D. There we are. So 4 to D is here, and there's the intersection point of point D. So now we can draw our lines up, and we have completed our half development. So this is half the shape. The rest of the shape would simply be a, a mirror image of this. So if we cut that shape out, it would make exactly what we want. Yeah, so there it is. And I suppose the key thing here is to realise that in order to determine some of these irregular shapes, we had to do a diagonal line across those faces so we could get two triangulation points to locate one of those points. And we do it all with arcs, just like you saw me do over here. Alright, okay then. Good luck with it. That's eight marks, by the way, in your HSC. Eight percent.